All right, let's talk about stoichiometry of the aqueous solutions. So uh, we got to consider times when you're going to see a question like this on the test. The mass of solid sodium chloride needed to track complete with one and a half liters of 0 0.100 molar silver nitrate solution. So the first thing you should think of when looking at a question like this is notice that you're given information about one chemical but asked about another different chemical. That tells you a couple of things. One, you are going to be, well, one, you're going to need to do something involving moles because if you're going to relate one chemical to another chemical, mole is the only unit of measurement that allows you to do that. And if you need moles to relate two chemicals, here's what else that tells you, you need a balanced equation. So that's why when dealing with this, before you can even calculate anything, you need a balanced equation. So that's the reason for this there here. Now you notice it's already balanced as written. One silver, one silver, one nitrate, one nitrate, one sodium, one sodium, one chlorine, one chlorine. Now, um, it, once you've got that, if you're going to relate two things, this is what stoichiometry is. You'll use stoichiometry when trying to relate one chemical with a different chemical. So in order to do that stoichiometry thing, Bear in mind, it will have to do with moles in some way or another. So somehow, you're going to have to get moles out of this, convert moles of this to moles of this, and then moles of this becomes, well, in this case, grams of this. It becomes whatever it is the question asks you for. In this case, it's grams. So that's the reason why what I'm going to show you are two versions of this, one with the solution broken down piece by piece and one with the entire thing in one giant calculation. Either is acceptable on the test. Here's the piece by piece breakdown. You need to start by calculating, converting to moles because everything is related to other things in terms of moles. So there's, this is the only thing you have enough information to calculate moles for. So as a reminder, how did you know to do this? Like the, it should make sense, liters cancels liters, give moles for the answer, but how did you know to do this? Uh, remember that molarity equals moles per liter. So times both sides by liters and liters cancel liters, so liters times molarity equals moles, so liters times molarity equals moles, right? We have to understand this is 0 0.100 M, this is capital M, it's just capital M is equal to moles per liter. So that's why it looks the way it does. Okay, so this is the reason why we need to do this. So anyway, once you have converted to moles, you then use stoichiometry to convert from moles of what you're given to moles of what you're being asked for. Remember, these come from the balanced equation. There's the NaCl, there's the silver nitrate. And then once you've done that, you can then take moles of what you're given. Sorry. Moles of what you're given becomes moles of what you're trying to find. Moles of what you're trying to find is converted to grams of what you're trying to find because this one asks for mass. So that's why you get this. This is your final answer, by the way. Um, so that's the reason why you have that answer, and that's, that's the reason for the setup. So you got to convert to moles first, and once you're in moles, you can do this. Now, I, like I said, there's no reason why you have to do one calculation, write down an intermediate answer, because it's essentially what happened here. You have a calculation, intermediate answer, and then another calculation where you finish up. You can do it in one big piece, and so this is what it looks like all in one big piece. I just show it broken down, that way you can see why the things that are done aren't done. But this is totally acceptable. It's fine if you can do this. Do this. If you can do it this way, do it this way. It's fine. Um, so, given that, sometimes there's a little more that has to be done with these things. Now, before I mention anything much more, this is one of the homework problems, and so this is something that if you can work on the homework problem and check and see if it matches this thing. Now, uh, I'll get this out of the way. And those are other homework problems. Okay, great. Now for this one. Once again, imagine looking at this on the test, having no context for it. How do you know what to even do with this? So you look at the question, and once again, it gives you information about one chemical, but also gives you information about a different chemical. Well, that's how you know you need stoichiometry. If it's giving you information about multiple chemicals, or gives you information about one and asks about another, yeah, You've got to do that stoichiometry thing. You need, if you're going to relate two different chemicals, you need moles. And if you're doing mole calculations, that's stoichiometry. So, um, I'm getting this out of the way. All right, now, here's how you actually go about doing this. Once again, 
you have to convert to moles. Like the first thing you do, well, okay, back up a sec. First thing you do is come with a balanced equation. Uh, once you have that, then you convert to moles. But here's the thing, and this is tricky. Look, a lot of people will just like take this times this or divide by or whatever and forget that you cannot get moles if you're trying to do this and this. You must convert this to liters first. It's just, it's absolutely necessary. So this turned into this. And by the way, just so you can see, it was 265 milliliters times one liter is a thousand milliliters. Milliliters cancel milliliters. So that becomes 0 0.265 liters. Okay, this is where this number came from. So anyway, once that's done, now you can do stuff with this. Remember, we said molarity equals moles per liter. So if you times both sides by liters, then liters cancel liters to give moles by itself. So we're trying to convert to moles. And liters times molarity does that. So liters times molarity does that. Remember, this molarity is this right here. Um, once you've got this, this is not your final answer. This is an intermediate answer. So you have moles of one chemical that this chemical, and by the way, the reason why I did it with this one and not this one is because this is the only one I can get moles out of. Look, exactly how many milliliters of this? You don't have enough information to find out how many moles you have. You're being asked about this chemical. So the calculation begins with the chemical that you're not being asked about, honestly. It's the only one you can get moles out of. Anyway, once you do that, you can do a little classic stoichiometry to find out how many moles of the chemical you're being asked about are produced by the chemical you were given. So the chemical you're given, mole ratio, see this number came from here, this number came from here, oops, sorry, I pointed the wrong one, this number came from here, and then that gives you how many moles of the chemical you're trying to find, and then once you have moles of the chemical you're trying to find, go back to the question, what are you trying to do? Calculate how many milliliters. So, okay, Remember, molarity equals moles per liter. So I times both sides by liters to get liters times molarity equals moles. And then I divide both sides by molarity. So liters equals moles over molarity. So there's the number moles. There's the molarity. So that number divided by this number will give me the answer. And indeed, that's what happens here. This number the moles divided by the molarity. Now what's that all about? Well, it gives liters. The question is asking for milliliters. So the final step is, okay, you get your liters from this part right here, and then you throw this in to convert your liters to milliliters, because yes, you gotta respond with what you're given for starters, and second of all, in this case, it actually specifically tells you that it wants milliliters for an answer. So that is the reason why you do it this way. And of course, that would be boxed as your final answer, 159 milliliters, because hey, look, three sig figs, three sig figs, three sig figs, and three sig figs. All right, now, um, that, so that was broken down step by step, where convert to moles of the one you can make mol get moles out of, and then from moles of the first chemical to moles of the other chemical, and then from moles of the other chemical to whatever you were asked for, in this case, to volume, using this equation right here, rearranging the definition of molarity to help you find what it is you need to find. Now, if you want to do that all in one giant step, you absolutely can. It looks like this. I shouldn't say one giant step, but one giant multi-part calculation. You notice it took the raw 265 milliliters, convert it to liters, and then times it by the molarity in a way so that liters would cancel liters give me moles, and then moles of what I'm given to moles of what I want, from moles of what I want to liters of what I want, and from liters of what I want to milliliters of what I want. So this would be something to copy down on your handout to have because I want you to be able to see both the step-by-step -step breakdown and then, which is totally acceptable, you don't have to do it this way, but if this looks appealing and you feel like you can handle this, then sure, do it this way on the test, it's fine. So these are practice problems. So you give you a chance to practice with it and master it. And then uh, that brings to the last question. Let's get this out of the way. Or rather the last example question for this notes. So, let, 
so uh, okay when these two things react it tells you about your product so it asks how much forms and then it get from like these other things oh man what do you do with this now first of all looking at this the first thing I'm gonna say is calculate mass so you know you're gonna get an answer in grams and then you'll notice it's giving you, it's asking about lead to chloride, and then it's giving you information about this other chemical and this other chemical. Oh my. So first of all, I already know off the top, off the top of my head that it's giving you information about these chemicals and asking about this other one. For sure, it's stoichiometry. Now here's something else to consider. When you come up with the balanced equation for it, this, you look at it, and you've got to notice that it gives you information about lead to nitrate, that's this one, and sodium chloride, which is this one. And wait a minute, why are you giving me information about two different reactants? Hmm, let's think back to stoichiometry. Remember if you were given information about two reactants, you had to do two calculations because you didn't know which one's limiting. Consider the previous example here, you only had information about one of the reactants. You'll notice the potassium chromate. The other reactant, it asked you about. Here, so basically you're only given enough information to get moles for one reactant, therefore you did one calculation. Here, you're given information about two reactants, so you have to do two calculations, just like we did in the stoichiometry unit. Now in this case, the calculations wind up being just a little bit longer. So actually, I will bring those up right here. Here we go. I'll pull the whole things up so you can see. So first of all, this is the calculation itself. Pause the video now to copy it down. And then um, having done that, the next thing to point out is, all right, what's going on here? Just like before, you take the, the you're taking what you're given, in this case, the, lead, the leaders, You'll notice I've already started by converting to liters. Like I did that before I even began. You could actually have included that on here, but I actually left it off. But a, a conversion to liters would look like 124 milliliters times one liter is a thousand liters or milliliters. And then like this would go right here and then we followed by all these things. So this thing gave the 0.124 liters and that answer goes right here and then the calculation continues so really you could have done this plus these things also now um, in terms of like what we're looking at you got your liters convert liters to moles of what you're given moles of what you're given to moles of what you're trying to find moles of what you're trying to find to grams of what you're trying to find and you'll notice that these two calculations yield two different answers Remember how you pick the smaller answer as the correct final answer, which actually I think I put that on the answer piece right here. Okay, so this would be the final answer chosen right here. Now in this case, it only asked how much is made, so actually technically this doesn't need to be in the answer, but this is a true fact. The limited reactant makes less product, and so that means it's gonna determine the smaller number as being the actual number produced, or theoretically the actual number produced. Okay, so essentially that's what we're looking at for how to handle example problem 11-11. Um, this would be, again, what do we see in here that we see in all stoichiometry? A relationship between one chemical and another using moles. So essentially remember that complicated though it may look, you're just getting, you're just finding a way to get moles out of this so that you can turn moles of this into moles of this and then from moles of this, you can get whatever you need. It's just converting to and from moles. So again, complicated that may seem, it's just converting to, to moles and then from moles. So once you do that, you can handle any kind of question of this sort that might come up. So uh, let me think that's about the last of it. There's some homework problems to work on. There you go, that should do it.